my cabinet of wonders or maybe just crap I was um, cleaning up here and um, making some room and doing stuff putting stuff in boxes and, and such and I noticed the uh, the weird collection of oh sorry sorry pussycat I uh, might disturb the cat who's just taking a piss. It isn't its appropriate thing. Well, okay, never mind. We'll cut this out. But uh, loads of shit and a lot of old projects and, st and stuff. So I thought it might be fun to look at them uh, and, and tell you something about it. Maybe not, maybe it's not fun at all, but maybe it's only fun for me. It could be as well. If so, please let me know. I will never make a video about about shit I collected or made in, uh, I don't know, a few years, ten years. So, I'll just grab a box off the shelf because most of the stuff is could be tools or just stuff I bought because I wanted to make something but I never did. <coughs> Who knows? Okay, so this is not a very interesting box, although everything has a story, of course. This is an uh, amplifier kit I bought once. Uh, apparently, uh, didn't get far. Never gonna finish it. One tiny stepper, a DC motor out of the printer. These, these were nice. If you uh, make panels with tape. Uh, there is always a problem uh, connecting them to wire, and I use these blocks. These are, I think, original for um, alarms, window alarms. They use tape, and uh, you put it under this terminal, and then you can connect it to a wire. Uh, yeah, so if you use tape on these planner speakers or something, you could use these kind of terminals. You can find them at Conrad or uh, DigiKey. Alarm, tape, terminal, something like this. Not a very interesting box. Ah, yeah. This I know. Typical of me buying stuff. This was a second-hand um, cheapy um, Trust laptop power supply. And the nice thing about these is that they got different voltages. And uh, are quite... Let me see, it's an old from an old laptop and they uh, are really power hungry. In this case it's 120 watt, so that's good. So they can be used for uh, lots of nice projects or um, stuff. So a lot of power for a, such a tiny thing and if you buy them second hand they cost like nothing of course. But of course I also bought them uh, new, so this is yeah, this is the sort of Meanwell kind of power supply. Also bought it for a Class D amplifier. Uh, I think for a double Class D amplifier because it's 10 amps, it's quite a lot at 24 volts. So never used it. I wanted to use it for something, and uh, apparently I never did. I think I want to make an active uh, system. Um, these are power bricks, I think. Yeah. Uh, also, 5 amp, 24 volt, I think. Yeah, DC, 24 volt. And the reason is I bought these because I bought loads of stuff at, at Taobao, I think it was. And this is the one used in the Bluetooth amplifier uh, for the Bluetooth speaker. So I bought six of them. I uh, used one in the Bluetooth. Tiny adapters. Not visible at all. No, this is 12 volt version. I used these for electrostatic speakers. It, it's, and I'll explain later. But um, I'll explain later. But it's nice to have uh, adapters externally, so no uh, AC um, 230 volts 
inside my builds because um, well you probably have to uh, well all the regulations and stuff so if you can do it with uh, DC or a smallish voltage or low voltage then uh, you're pretty much safe at least people can kill themselves easily never say never these are still most uh, I think not very weird products I mean you probably uh, it's kind of dark eh? you probably uh, seen weirder stuff um, these inverter for cathode lamps I use for um, the BIOS supply for electrostatic speakers as well as for the e EAP speakers so I bought a few of them and they got um, 12 volt in DC and 350 AC out and some of them 600 depending on the model this is uh, for a small lamp so it's lower voltage but this one is for 420 millimeter lamp and it has 700 volts out and starting voltage of 1100 the cool thing is, is that you can um, adjust the AC output just with DC voltages that's where the adapters came in I use an adapter then I use uh, let me see these I think LM37 um, DC DC converters do I have one without packaging? no I bet I do. These ones, a typical AliExpress uh, product. You can adjust the voltage here. So, um, adapter goes in here. Uh, you can adjust the voltage here. Then the voltage, DC voltage, goes to one of these. Then you have high voltage AC, which you can uh, adjust. This, uh, Puss. Come here. Come on, Puss. I know it's not a dog, but uh, sometimes it works. Um, so that's that's the re this this is the reason that I use these um, tiny AC adapters. Then this is a voltage amp meter. Never used it. This is probably again a voltage and amp, amp meter. Yeah, it could be used for uh, maybe um, a power supply. Uh, this is also a DC DC to DC converter, but a little bit more. Um, is it by the way? I th yes, I think yes, it is. What is? My cat is going uh, mental. Hey, <laughs> come here. Come. Okay. Um, then these tiny things are load circuits for um, lithium-ion batteries. It's for a project. We'll see. Never. We're not gonna use these versions, but uh, they are quite nice and cheap. That's not the one I'm gonna use. These are really nice. If you want to have a basic crappy bench ply where you can adjust the voltage and the amperage, uh, these modules are quite nice. I think they were 13, 13, 13, 14, 15, 15 euros maybe. And this is the model number. And uh, you can adjust everything, it's really nice. You can find videos about these reviews. They're nice modules. You can make this and use one of these uh, amp amperage and voltage meters to make a pretty nice bench of power supply. Not the cleanest, probably, but open jumper. This would be, I guess, it's something Arduino. Yeah, a relay board. For me, I got these uh, sort of 
I'm all into Arduino. I'm all into well, not really. I'm not never been in Arduino, but uh, then I do this a lot, and I buy all kinds of shit for it, and then um, something else comes along, and then well, what you got is loads of shit. This is a stepper motor for the Arduino. Only bought one because I want to test something. Then these plus the uh, these are really nice. Yeah, very simple class D amplifier, two channel. I think it's forty watts or something in four ohm. I think two times forty or fifty. But you can bridge them. Uh, I'm not sure which points it was, but you can make it bridgeable, and then it's uh, 100 watts in two ohms, which could be uh, well, could be fun. Uh, these are the cables for it. Uh, I bought these um, big power supplies for these boards, so I could use two of them and uh, bridge them both. So you got two channels in uh, 100 watts in two ohms. And since I make my own loudspeakers usually, I can adjust the impedance. If I want to make a 2 ohm loudspeaker, I could use this board bridged. Uh, they sound quite good, they can even... Um, I had them on my quads and they just play fine. And if you bought, I, th I believe it was, if you bought 6 of them, you will get the same class D amplifier but a bit be better looking probably a little bit more expensive like way more expensive but also nice board uh, not bridgeable although or it should be possible but then you have to find out which connection you have to bridge which I don't know at the same time I bought some weird thing it's a, it's a, I think it's a 4 channel or a 2.1 channel amplifier with power supply integrated because that would be nice and this it looks rather decent no clue how it sounds I never used it uh, but I think it was okay yeah, it's four it's four channel so this could it's four channel amplifier so only this thing could power uh, an active set of speakers with ease because I think the wattage was quite uh, quite okay. It has some uh, nice uh, you can uh, well you can just screw this to uh, to the metal housing or something get some uh, uh, crap in between of course but as well dump it in. So this box I, I hardly open and, and I, sometimes I do and then it's like, what the fuck is this? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I bought it once to use for, uh, what was the project? But uh, yeah, feels like um, finding money you lost, sort of. When I was a kid I uh, tried to on, on purpose lose money or at least let it disappear somewhere in the house and uh, hopefully I'll find it and then I will be really happy. Of course that didn't work. This is more of the recent, uh, not sure why this is here but probably had to put it somewhere and, and I'm not sure why this is there as well. This is the um, magnetic foil. Uh, let me see if I've got a magnet somewhere. You can see the, the field lines. So this is three pieces of magnet. And hmm, it's hard to see, but you can see these lines. Maybe the other way around is more. No, nope. no, it's not visible. But this is uh, you can see. Um, yeah, you can see the fields, but it still doesn't say what what is north or south. So it is funny to see if something is magnetic, but it's not. I hardly use it, but I, th I think I saw it once at uh, uh, Ave's channel, and I thought this one is also kind of it, it was in my wallet for a while, so it's kind of fucked up. But magnetic viewing film we must have. 
So the wires for uh, the planar thingies. I think some ordinary copper wire. Uh, more wire for the planars, more wire for the planars. And I'm waiting for a wire on the plan for the planars. New and much more wire. But yeah. This is by the way ink for this uh, printer that I use for um etching the laminate and stuff. People actually well most people don't know this kind of printer, so I might be able to show you the ink it uses. This is a, a, a Chinese uh, crap version. Well, the whole block is also completely fucked in shape. But it's this, it's wax. You put it in the machine and it melts it and then uh, you can print with it. This is my etch resist in the end. Probably uh, they don't recommend to use these Chinese stuff, of course. My warranty will be gone, probably. But it's a very old printer, so it <laughs> doesn't really matter. I had to buy every color because after a while it, it bitches about a color being empty and, and it doesn't want to print at all. Which is typical for printer manufacturers to screw you over if you only want to print black. This was uh, something I bought. The 5 watt laser, it can burn paper and such and um, this is the driver and I never, I played with it a few seconds and then never used it. Also I um, modified this, <laughs> the, the glasses I uh, got with it because I didn't trust it. I could like look underneath the glass and I was scared I would burn my eyes out, which I probably would if uh, I didn't make this uh, fancy looking gaffer tape modification but uh, these are um, shitty it's the blue laser it's 5 watts which is quite a lot so you can burn yourself pretty hard you can burn wood with it or engrave it and such but I wanted to use it for uh, cutting membranes for maybe the rubenoid or such because if you want to make a complicated design it's nice if you can cut it cleanly so I my idea was to put this on the CNC but uh, never had the time to actually do so but who knows this is uh... <laughs> oh I was looking for these okay um, elastic band used for the rubenoids round elastic band uh, here's more elastic band but thinner and this is actually glue and it's like they use it in the um, sewing industry. I mean, you might be, uh, you might remember this stuff from the IKEA. If you have like uh, curtains, you can, um, if you want to fix them to size, you can iron them to um, flap one of the, well, sewn. I'm not sure what the English word is, but and you can glue the two pieces of fabric together. So this is actually it. You see, it's just, it's hot glue in, in a pattern. You can uh, use it to glue all kinds of stuff. This is the same, but very uh, thinnish. It's really cool. Also used, or that was the idea, and I think I've used it a few times. To admire um, my printed coils to the Rubenoid's voice coil, coil, coil former. He has more of the fuzzy uh, version, more elastic band, very thick one. I'm not sure why I have this, but so this is a case of elastic bands and glue for fabric. This is a long video with just some bags and loads of uh, caps. So I got all the values to uh, play around with, and then. Um, if I am uh, satisfied, I just uh, buy some new ones and use it in the system. So this is all resistors and caps. And these, of course, are really shitty. You normally wouldn't use them in a, in a crossover at all. But it's uh, nice to do some fast testing and just uh, buy the required value. 
Although this is of course an insane villa you're never gonna use, but I think I'll rip rip them out out of some old power supply. And I thought they measured still okay, and I thought it's a waste to throw them away. So, so I desoldered everything I could use. This is all stuff related, or some of the stuff related to coatings. This is a bag of four micron graphite, very thin. This is an empty bottle, really nice empty bottle. I, I bought a few of these because they're nice to have if you make some coatings and stuff. Uh, this is all acrylic related. Uh, this is for a um, water based paint, gum arabic. Didn't like it to use it. This is Oxhal. Uh, Gucci water color. Well, also this is to get the, uh, I think it's the surface resistance uh, down. Uh, this is a medium of acrylic, so this is pure acrylic with, um, well, you can add water or whatever and then make um, your own paint. This is a uh, tattoo ink loaded with loads of uh, carbon black, used in the coating for the quads, or at least that's why I bought it, but I'm not. There is a problem that this. Yeah, it's not the best. It doesn't work with. Um, it only works with water based coatings, and water based coatings don't give me the best spray results. So, this is also graphite, but Chinese graphite. So, it comes in, um, in like. It doesn't look bad, but. It actually uh, feels li like they put sand in it or something. This is some um, conductive shielding paint, which is a lot of graphite and some acrylic probably. Wasn't expensive, it's for guitars, for shielding inside of guitars. Uh, acrylic, uh, this is water based, but uh, when it dries it's water resistant. So this I use used for coatings to make it water resistant. And these are all um, shielding coatings and they are uh, thick and there's a lot of carbon in it but uh, also the same story it's all water based. This is coating from Audio I think it's the ER Audio, yeah it's from Australia uh, it works, but it's uh, based on um, Ito, I think. Uh, just tin, tin oxide, no, tin. I know, no, I'm not sure. Ito, it is. Uh, more shielding for guitars. It worked, but um, I'm not a fan of the Ito um, stuff. Ah, a small box of tapes, all conductive tapes. So this is available on AliExpress I think. Aluminum 10 millimeters wide and I think it was like 2 micron or something or 1 micron. It's impossible to work with but it is nice to have. Some smallish copper tape you can get this at the um, art stores that do, do something with glass. Big uh, copper tape used for the BIOS ring in electrostatic speakers for instance, you can use this thinner tape as well. But for guitars as well, shielding. Then 3 mm wide, um, 35 micron or 40 micron, I'm not sure. Aluminum wire can be bought at the maskingshop.co.uk. This is 4, 3, and they got some, oh shit, other sizes. This is something uh, I think uh, Farnell sent me because they sent it the wrong uh, width. So I had like 10 rolls of these, which I didn't order, but they didn't want them back, so that's okay with me. Then uh, a 100 millimeter wide aluminum roll is because I didn't have the huge aluminum roll yet, and I wanted to print on something and, and play with the AMT stuff. So I made some AMTs with this, just a simple tape roll of aluminum. Put it in the printer and there we go. 
So, aluminum stuffies. This is ridiculous. This is uh, the typical Badger airbrush. Shitty. It's like 8 euros or something. And it comes with these... These uh, cups. Okay, this is not the, the, the right cup, but similar cups. And they are actually quite nice if you have to do coatings for on a bigger piece, like the quad panels. Also, their nozzle is a bit bigger than the typical airbrush, so it doesn't uh, it's, it's not offended by uh, thicker pieces. Shitty uh, Revel as well. Um, compressor. A airbrush that should work better, but... Wow. Professional airbrush kit, but I think it's from HBM, so that's probably not that professional. Another airbrush kit without the airbrush because it's uh, sitting in the thinner for a week, week or two. So nothing um, fancy there. Weird. Also not weird. Not fancy and not weird. I think that's half of one um, shelf. Not even, so uh, i probably leave it at this because the, the video is all, already way too long, I might cut it up. I may have, might not be interested at all. Boy! Oh, next time I'll do some projects because they're on, on the other shelves apparently.